Okay, we've covered some things over there in the introduction section where I spoke about some big businesses. Now let's get into the meat of it. I talked about how these big companies like SAP were leveraging Oracle's database infrastructure, selling through business consultancies, leveraging against their sales force to sell to some of the biggest companies around the world. I spoke to you about how IPOs are structured in the financial services sector. And I gave you a sort of, sort of hinted towards how my companies utilize some of these strategies. And now we're really going to start talking about what that is for the small to medium business enterprise or even the startup. So the question really is, who are your distributors? Why And why do we need them? Now, distributors in the sense or these networks that I'm, I'm, I'm speaking about are, as far as you leveraging relationships, could be in the form of using influencers. Influencers like your Instagram influencers, your YouTube influencers, anyone who has an audience who can essentially take your brand or product and promote it to that audience. That's an example of a distributor. Distributors in and of themselves, people who label themselves as distributors, if you find there's lots of them out there. They do it for food and produce, they'll do it for merchandising, all for all sorts, and they'll do it for a lot of them in the financial services sector. These are people that will go out there and distribute your product. They're also known as introducers and also as external sales forces. I'll give you an example. When I used to, with Core Agents, a company I mentioned, uh, my, the long, one I've had for the longest, uh, selling when I was selling real estate investments, I would partner with a property developer. So I was the person with the exclusive contract. I would then go out uh, to external sales forces, and those would be in the form of, you know, investment real estate companies all around the world. And I'd take this property or this project, and I'd give it to them, and they would effectively have their own sales teams, their brokers, sell it for me. So I was benefiting from an external sales force. So it's fantastic. And that is what your distributions are to you. What are they doing? Well, they're promoting your brand as much as it is your product. So they're really promote pushing your brand out there too. So it's marketing that you're not paying for. They're accessing markets that you wouldn't be tapping into traditionally. If you've got a, if you're based in the US and your marketing budget's here, you only speak English, then this is the market you're really focusing on. Now you have a partner in Dubai. Now you've got access to a market you didn't prepare for, but you're now selling to that market and that's fantastic. So untapped markets, it's expanding your overall reach by utilizing a network of people and companies out there. They are accessing customers all around the world or all around the country, people that you wouldn't even be directly marketing to. They're giving you massive impact over a massive state. Of course, you've got your external sales forces. That's what this all is. If you're having these companies work for you, they are your external sales force and you're not paying them salaries, you're paying them on a performance basis. And of course, everything is increasing your gross revenue, the bottom line, and that's what we're really here for. It all comes down to pooling your resources. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's one statement my, uh, my lecturer at university when I first started business, my business uh, course there, he said, pool your resources, you're gonna be doing it anyway. Okay, so when you get into business, what do you do? You find yourself an accountant, you find yourself a lawyer, you find yourself someone that can help you with marketing. Eventually you find yourself someone that can help you with sales, with product manufacturing. You're always pooling resources, you're contacting people, you're bringing them into your sphere and you're utilizing them. That is essentially what you're doing here with those distribution networks. You're leveraging against their industry contacts. If they're in the business, if they're out there and they have an existing reputation, you're leveraging against their contacts. Those contacts are opening doors that you would have never had access to. So that's a great benefit. They're experts. Okay. If you're, if I'm selling real estate and I'm partnering with a renowned real estate investment company, or if I'm selling certain clothing at lines and I'm, I partner with a, very well renowned clothing outlet, I'm leveraging on their expertise, people's trust in buying into them. And of course, that leads into reputation. If they're reputable businesses, they're propping me up by promoting my product. The simple fact, if I'm on their menu, if I'm on their shelves, if I'm in their stock, if I'm being promoted by them, their reputations are what I'm benefiting from. Because if they've got good stuff, if they've got a good reputation, it's gonna be seen that I am a reputable business too. And of course, if you've got multiple different companies working with you, you're benefiting from multiple different marketing strategies. Some may be focused solely on direct selling telephone sales. Some may be focused on selling at expos. Some may be online sales only. Some, some may have retail outlets. You're benefiting from a wide array of marketing strategies now, and you can also see which ones work better for your business as well. And you can start picking and choosing, becoming a bit more selective, but equally, you can also take that information and help 
your other agents or your other people in your distribution chain know what works best. So it's super important for your business in terms of survivability and longevity. So I spoke about increased sales efficiency. Well, let's break that down. It's narrowing the gap between your products and services in a very cost effective way because you're not paying for your sales stuff, because not, you're not paying for that marketing budget. It's the other companies doing it for you. It's making it very <clears throat> cost effective. Now, it's also reducing the upfront marketing and especially this can become very, very, very expensive. And this is coming from a recruitment consultant, someone who started off as a headhunter, human capital. If you're using other companies as your sales force, your marketing force, you're not having to absorb the cost of having that for its sales force internally. And that includes also the infrastructure cost. We're not, we're not having to have huge office infrastructure if the majority of the people out there promoting your product can stand on their own two legs because they're their own companies. It's a very good benefit. And another massive, 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 massive benefit to having uh, using networks or distribution networks is the fact that you have a very good, very strong pulse on the market. And that means we're talking about the people who are these companies who are doing the pre-sale work and they're contacting their potential clients and they're doing all the work to get the sale. And after the sale is done, they're dealing with all the post the post sale uh, work that goes into play. And that's talking about customer service, if there's any problems, anything like that, they're dealing with that. And of course, they're giving you real feedback if your product's not, if your product's defective in any way, if your service is not doing what it's promised to do, if things aren't going as well as they should, you're gonna hear that from your trusted partners because they're there partnered with you. The whole point of using a distribution network is that you have partners who are, are aligned with you, who are trusting your brand and your trust and their ability to execute for you you're going to get real and true valuable feedback from them. And of course, like I said earlier, you're going to know what marketing strategies work best. This is the pulse that you need, especially when you're thinking about global distribution, right? You're going to know what works better. And so you can chop and change your marketing strategies as far as what to tell your agent distribution networks to do. So that gives you a very, very, very strong advantage. So just to quickly recap, this is why we love distribution networks. It's why you should too. The massive reach and frequency, the valuable feedback, the pooling of resources, tapping into industry contacts that you wouldn't have otherwise had access to, achieving massive action very, very quickly, getting that pulse as we mentioned, instilled trust using or leveraging their trust to gain as, as, as an ambassador to your product so that your product or your service or your brand is also propped up to reduce marketing costs. Your marketing strategy, strategies and knowing what works and what doesn't pre-sale and post-sale customer service it's been taken care of for you for the most part depending on how your product structured a lot of that cost and time is taken off your hands increasing your overall gross revenue you're using external sales forces you're not internal um, untapped markets as i explained brand promotion they're really propping your brand up and it's been promoted in a way that you couldn't have done in a, if you're a small business, there's no way you could achieve that kind of awareness at such a small early stage. And of course, the efficiency of all of that, that whole sales process become very efficient because it's reducing your opportunity cost. And what is that? Your opportunity cost is how much time, money it costs you to have something executed well. <clears throat> it's reducing that. So that's fantastic. That is the reason why we love distribution networks. It's the reason why they work. It's the reason why I've used them from day one. It's, it's, I, I learned about them way back when I first started using or started implementing my recruitment and headhunting strategy. I started aligning myself with other businesses and I'm going to show you that now in the next section.